got another tear down. Um, I'm doing a bit of uh, reverse engineering and a bit of work on some old CRTs. I needed an RF converter, so I hit up eBay and got the cheapest thing I could find, and that's this, an AV to RF converter. Uh, it's, it's part number SB-168, made by NAC Pro. Sticker here's got a DL44273 part number. And um, yeah, it's it cost me like 3 or $4 delivered. And the most interesting thing is, it's mains powered. No... Um, no power packs or like wall warts or you know power converters or anything. It's 240 volts straight in, so it's it's going to be a bit scary, I think. So I bought it mostly out of morbid curiosity more than anything. Um, I got a bit impatient waiting for this thing to arrive, so I went down to Akihabara and got this uh, Sega um, RF converter HSS-0110. It's for a Sega Genesis, and I just cut off the Genesis plug, put a USB for the power because it runs on 5 volts and some uh, some RCA plugs and that works quite well for the RF but yeah um, I, I want to pull this apart and see what's inside it my idea when I bought it was I would um, get rid of the power supply part of the circuit board if I could and then just feed DC in make it a bit safer um, RF conversion isn't that complicated so it probably would work fine if you did that um, also I bought this thing it's a Philips PM5518-TX color TV pattern generator. Got it for $10 plus $15 delivery. And um, it does all the uh, the patterns and stuff, all the circles and the crosses and that cross hatching and the checkers and color bursts and color bars and all that, both in RF and in um, composite video. So, yeah, this sort of stuff is a little bit obsolete when, when I've got this uh, big test, test box, which works rather well after I uh, vacuumed it out of all the dust put some deoxit and stuff on the uh, pots and on the contacts but um yeah I might just have a look inside this show you guys what's inside and see how cheap they can make a mains powered device so without any further ado let's pull this box open what well, on the uh, data data plate card thing here it's saying it's got 6 to 12 channels uh, RF output 6 to 12 channel there audio carrier frequency 5.5 megahertz Antenna input, 45 to 1000 megahertz, 220 volt power supply, and it consumes one watt. A little bit more than that if it's going to start burning up. And here it is, the usual cheap-ish looking plastic. They've got a bit of a, um, what's that, like, like they sandblasted the mould to give it a bit of a texture so it doesn't feel too cheap and shiny. But it's, uh, it's definitely, oh look at that flexible and there's not much going on inside I can see through the vent the circuit board's only taking up half the space so it looks like either they've got a, um, a standard box there putting uh, multiple things in or they've made it big so it just it it looks more than what it is who knows anyway Phillips head all right there we go wow there is not much in there what is going on here? Is that like a that's RF out transformer? So what's the 220 volts doing? There's n there's no real power supply. There's a transistor. Is that a voltage regulator? M five 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 one V one. Maybe that's a voltage regulator. Oh yeah, the LED there, it's got a LED marked on the circuit board, and it says it's coming around here, shining out the front to tell you it's turned on. There's no power supply there. Well, not really anything of much, much happening. Maybe it's a uh, one of those capacitor um, style power supplies. I think uh, Big Cliver's gone into one of them, just explain how they work. Yeah, look at that. There's wait, where's our where's our voltage coming in? Comes into a resistor, that big power resistor there. That's like a what, a one watt. Then it comes through the diode, so we've got a halfway rectification. And then through Oh, okay. That is a power supply. Oh, the RF out. What I thought was the RF out was labelled... I thought it was labelled to the uh, transformer there, but it's actually got a little 
solder pad. So it must be for there because that's tracing around to this this socket. So the RF out is not for the transformer. Did I say transistor? Transformer. I'm talking about the transformer. So that is a power supply section there. Okay, okay. Now it's making a bit more sense to me. But look at this. I'm going to zoom in a bit because this is a little bit scary. Alright, so I've had a brief look at this and it seems like this is the power supply. It says RF out here, but it seems like it's this little pad here because that's a trace. You can see there. comes around and connects through here. So that wasn't an RF transformer. It's a power supply transformer. It's all switch mode power supply. So that transistor would be a, um, a switch mode a controller of some sort. And uh, that's providing our voltage. But what's interesting is this uh, resistor is a uh, that's where the mains comes in, 220 volts, and then it comes through this diode and then the resistor here and there's a trace underneath here. That's all at mains voltage. If I turn that over, we haven't got much separation there. That's probably, oh, a millimeter or so. Let's measure that. What do we got? Yep, one millimeter. We have got one millimeter of creepage distance between the mains voltage and the RF out. So any sort of fault there, you can have 220 volts going straight into the RF section of your uh, console or your um, TV or whatever. That's not good. I would like to see a lot more separation. Even, um, you know, dig a line through there. You know, route out that so there's uh, a complete gap. I mean, we've got so much space in this, uh, in this device. There's no reason why you couldn't have that circuit board a bit bigger and then have a nice big nice big gap there I mean it's it's four bucks there cutting down every single cent they can but you know come on guys a bit more space there you can see here it looks like this is repurposed so there was more in this box on the back it's all um, kind of uh, molded in there so maybe it's kind of maybe they can replace the back section in the actual mold itself to have a different back plate and uh, then they can uh, use this for other purposes the uh, mains lead coming in it's pretty thin but I mean we're not uh, doing much in the way of current draw PVC insulation 300 volt rated as they claim got the uh, European style plug there but this is like a terrible terrible European plug like the European plug isn't terrible but this one this design this uh, Chinese version is a cheap and nasty. At least it's got the insulation there, so if it's partially unplugged, you can't uh, give yourself a shock. But where it comes in here as well, it's only held in with some uh, hot snot, which doesn't take much to come undone, and then you can yank it out. It looks like it was meant to do a 90 degree turn around there. Still, that's not very good. Um, but they didn't even bother with that. They just put it straight and a bit of hot snot. She'll be right. Nah, no good. So what I might do, because I'm not going to actually use this thing, I'll probably keep this plug, and that's about it. But let's uh, let's plug this in to the Variac. Hopefully it doesn't go pop, or hopefully it does for some uh, fireworks. And um, I might measure the output voltage, and then we can figure out, because if it's like a 5 volt or 9 volt or 12 volts, um, it wouldn't be too much of a difficulty to uh, go ahead and disable this and um, wire in a different voltage so you can use your external plug pack and make it a lot safer if you actually wanted to use something like this. But yeah, I'll hook it up, see what we get. So I'm stripping these wires back and something's going on. Now the top one here, that's proper copper. This is just an old uh, multimeter lead, so it's nice and thick. These two at the bottom, that's what's inside this uh, mains lead that's apparently rated to 300 volts. That's not even copper. I don't know if you can see on the picture there, but that's like a more of a yellowish color than the um, kind of copper color of, well, copper. That looks like brass, like they've used brass wire. I've, I've never come across that before. Maybe it's a thing. And that's also looking like 30 um, AWG, 30 American wire gauge. This one here, that's uh, 20, which is about half a square millimeter. That's uh, just tinned wire. 
And this is a good quality wire. This is, you know, as it, it's advertised, it's like uh, 600 volts or something rated. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, 600 volt rating on the insulation. Um, and that's that's good stuff. So is this. This is, like, look, how, look how thin that is. And the insulation is real soft too. But brass? I mean, I've heard of cost cutting, but really? Anyway, let's get to hooking this thing up and see if it, see if it works. All set up now. Got the uh, Variac set to uh, 220 volts. A little bit lower because we're not loading up the transformer, so we're not pulling that voltage down. But that's uh, been measured on the output at 220 volts. We got the uh, wires here connected through to the fluke on the output. We we'll cross the output tra uh, output capacitor. Uh, that's just a filtering cap. So um, if we measure across there, we'll get our output voltage. Uh, time to engage safety squints and turn this thing on. All right, 4.5 volts. So that's close enough to 5 volts. It'll probably run on 5 volts, no worries. As I thought. So it looks like if you were to buy one of these, you can inject a 5 volts. I'll probably remove that transformer and uh, inject it across that capacitor and you'll probably be fine. Of course, chop off the mains lead and maybe wire in, uh, instead of the mains lead, put a new wire coming in and uh, solder in there. 5 volts, get an old uh, USB plug like a USB socket that's in line on a cable, and you'll be fine. All right, well, now that we know we can power from 5 volts, I might do that myself, and uh, we'll just see how well this thing converts to RF. Okay, so we're all set up, ready to look at the scope. We've got our input coming in through here. This is the uh, composite video input. I've just got a, like a color bars, so we've got a, um, a nice, easy uh, composite video signal to see. And then we've got the output here. Now there's a thing I noticed. This thing actually won't work out of the box because, I'll move this out of the way, you can see here, we've got the black and the green. Now the green wire I tested and it comes to the center pin of our um, output connector. The problem is they tied the green to the ground plane. And the ground, the, that's the outside of the connector, they've tied that to the signal. They reversed the wires. It, it won't work. So, yeah. If you plug this in, it's the wrong polarity. The, the circuit works, but you plug that into your TV, you won't get a signal. It's, they, they, they didn't even get the colors right around. Also, another funny thing I uh, noticed, you see here, you got the uh, yellow, white, red. That's video, left audio, right audio. On the case, it's marked left, right um, video. Now the case, is correct. The colors are not. So they must have got this cheaper. So uh, it's the wrong way around. Um, it was probably designed to have the the audio on the uh, or the, the, the sorry, the red on the left and the yellow on the right. But yeah, it's th three dollars. What can you expect? We're not going to let the colors match up. So this is actually the video in left audio, right audio. It's if you look at the, the panel here, it's correct, but the colors are not. So, yeah, we're not really uh, too good on the quality control. Anyway, let's uh, have a look at the, uh, the scope and see what the, um, the results are. All right, so this is uh, showing the input signal down the bottom. The top, that flat line, that's going to be our RF output once I connect it up. If this is showing a, a very typical color bar signal. Uh, working from left to right, you've got the uh, the sync pulse. Then we've got the that little burst there. That's a synchronization for the uh, timing and whatnot. Front porch, back porch, that sort of thing. Then that big fat bar that looks like a um, a stair step coming down as it travels to the right. That's our color bars. This is just showing uh, one line of the uh, the TV signal. So this will be repeated many times as the uh, the TV scans down the CRT or the LCD. As it scans down, it'll go through. Uh, one of these repeating signals all the way down and if it's a picture those bars will change all over the place to um, produce the correct uh, color. So we use a color bar signal like this so it's very easy, it's a very typical signal and it's, uh, it's stable and it's easy to trace through a circuit for testing. But this is uh, basically a perfect composite video signal uh, coming out of my uh, function generator. Now if I connect the, um, this circuit up to this uh, input, have a look what happens to this this perfect signal. 
kind of rounds off a bit, doesn't it? I disconnect that. Look at that. Look at the uh, the difference. It's really loading it down, isn't it? Not that great. So let's hook up the output. And there's the output. Uh, ignore that flickering. That's just the uh, other part, the uh, the sync pulses and whatnot, the uh, the horizontal sync and all that sort of gear. Uh, but yeah, the output, it's a bit meh. I'm not impressed. Not really at all. We've lost a lot of color information. Uh, it will still work, but it's not going to be a very nice picture. It's going to be washed out and just not that good. All those rounded off corners and the uh, the lack of uh, amplitude in the signal. Yeah. Not impressed, really. So what's the verdict? Well, with very small brass mains cable, small clearances between the mains voltages and the exposed metal RF plugs, things wired backwards and uh, the colors the wrong way around and terrible performance two thumbs down don't buy it it's absolute well shit really NAC Pro SB168 don't even bother buying it spend some money get a better quality product I got the Sega uh, RF converter from Akihabara secondhand for like five dollars this it's more dangerous than what it's what it's worth so yeah I hope that helps you decide not to buy it. Uh, don't forget, we got that Patreon. Keep watching our videos. We'll see you next time.